This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 218 of The Real Word. Word is up. Episode 218, but episode one after the BAM launch. Do we change the number, Nicole? No. No. All right. So we just roll right into it as always is what we do here on The Real Word. So we've got two surveys that we're going to go over. One is your consumer confidence, essentially. Mm -hmm. The next one is builder confidence. So it might give us a peek onto the future. And then, of course, we've got a marketeer of the week. Let's start with racket number one. Since 2014, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York has done this survey, the survey of consumer expectations. They did it again. Everybody was surveyed in February of this year, 2022. And we're going to go over the key findings from this 2022 survey. So these are households. These are your consumers, the people that every agent broker is going after right now or is servicing as a part of But this is for the future. This work. is what they think for the next this year. This is for the future. Future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's go over some of these key findings. All right. Let's jump into it. Home prices and rents. The average home price change expectations at the one-year horizon rose sharply relative to last year. So last year, in February, this survey found that consumers, or households rather, Mm -hmm. thought that home prices would go up 5.7%. That was basically in line with a lot of predictions from economists. We know that it went up over 20% and it totally exploded. This year, households feel like prices will go up 7%, okay? So they were way off last year, as was most people predicting home prices. And this year they're predicting 7%, which is in line with like Fannie and Freddie Mac are right there between 7 and 7.9%. Household home price change expectations for the five-year horizon though, Nicole, Mm -hmm. are not that bullish. So households <laughs> expect prices to rise by 2.2% per year on average for the next five years. So if they're saying 7% increase this year, they're really only counting a 1% to 2% increase over the following four years after mm-hmm. this year in home prices. So households are not very bullish on long-term home price growth. Obviously, we've seen such huge growth growth huge. over the last two years that we don't believe is sustainable. I think everybody would agree with that. Uh, Rent expectations were higher than home price expectations over both timeframes. So this year, they believe it's going to go up 11.5% compared to the 6.6% that they predicted last year. And over the next five years, households expect annual rent increases of 5.2%, which is up 4.4%. From a year ago, taken together, these numbers suggest a spike in rents in the near term. We're seeing that everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, And there's a lot of people that are just staying in their rent right now because they're looking at other, well, they can't buy a house because of the inventory and all this. And then they're looking at, wow, rents have really exploded in my market. I'm just getting a slight increase because I've been a good tenant. They know me. I'm going to stay put where I am. Mm -hmm. Housing outlook. Okay. So this is, this I think is, to your point, but when we were looking at this topic before the show, Nicole, yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's a little bit more valuable of an insight when I we agree. look at, at I mean, the real feeling about the those market. Those last numbers, they were, I feel like they were just pulling some numbers out of the sky, you know? Well, yeah, I they mean, pulled 5.7 out last year and it was, yeah. you know, over 20%. 20, so. Yeah, yeah. But the housing outlook of what actions homeowners and households yeah. would take if this happens, then what? That's right. definitely more insightful. Uh, Because they're saying what they would do put in a specific situation. So attitudes towards housing as a financial investment remain strongly positive. 71% of households of all respondents rather characterized that buying property in their zip code was very good or somewhat good. Slightly down last year, it was 73.6%. Not much. Not much of a decrease. So everybody feels like, okay, in my, not everybody, three out of four people. Uh, that that's a good investment. The share of respondents reporting that household is bad or somewhat bad rose to almost 10%, which was 6.5% last year. If you go on TikTok, you'd think that it's 100% people think 
crash bubble, total housing crisis. Mm -hmm. But we know that that is mostly due to inventory. Well, but this is also, the, I mean, this is specific to their zip code. Too. Their zip code. Their yeah, zip so where they code. Live. So they could potentially just not be in an ideal location that they think True. is a good investment. So, True. True. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So the average expected probability of buying a home if the household were to move within the next three years. So if, if you were to move, mm -hmm. if your clients were to move in the next three years, only 60% of them expected that they would buy another house. Last year, it was almost 70% when polled in February of 21. So almost down a full 10%. 10%. 10. It's about 8% mm -hmm. drop. In 2021 yep. from to today, if your clients were to move, only 60% of them, just over 60, would <clears> actually <throat> buy again. So a lot of people are like, okay, if I were to move in the next three years, I'm going to go look for a rent. I'm going to cash out and go look for a rent. I mean, and, it's, it's, I, and I'm actually curious to see what who is who who is seeing that in real life. Um, I've already seen it. You know, individuals that have moved here from New York, they bought last year. They now are moving back because their job is requiring them to move back, but they are not buying this time. They are renting. Um, but I think they also know that the competition is so steep where they're just, they know that they just need to grab a rent. So grab a rent for 12 months, see what happens. See what happens, see what they can do. At least then they can get, in this situation, they have children. So get the kids settled get them into a school. They're in the town that they want to be in, you know, grab what you can. Because of rent prices, this also holds people back from selling, which is why this, this inventory issue just keeps compounding. Potentially, but they just made almost $200,000 in a year. So yeah, like so that. for them, it's just, you know, a couple extra bucks a month at this point. Yeah. A couple extra dollars. Renters extra dollars. reported a sharp decline in their probability of owning a home in the future. So if you've been renting this whole time and if you've been looking the last couple of years, Maybe you missed out on a bunch of offers. Those renters' attitude towards buying a house has dropped 51.6% in 2021 to now 43.3% this year. So they're not very bullish on their outlook of buying a home in the future. Nope. And a lot of them, if they're getting locked into 12 months rent, maybe, you know, I still would, I would still market as an agent to renters and show and certainly showing them. We've talked about the Redfin data center, yeah. that it's still cheaper to own a house. And then I'm also going to be educating them on the yeah. wealth in this country is disproportionately on homeowners, real estate owners, as opposed to renters. Did you see that meme on, I think, well, I saw it on Instagram, um, you know, they, they were they were sort of putting uh, to uh, talking about interest rates and how, you know, even like with interest rates being at 6% or 5% or whatever number they decide to pull out for this one, renters are paying 100%. Um, so even right. that's sort of like an interesting like slap in the face too. And it's like put put in that, in that, you know, you like memes. So uh, like I, I love know, memes. I'm you in, love I'm in memes. The, well, You're in the meme business. I'm not in the meme business. Don't, don't say <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. But again, uh, I mean that again in that and that certainly shows the truth of it too. Now you're paying, you know, your interest rate is a hundred percent, you know, not not just down here in the yeah, floors. You are. You're, yeah. you're paying all interest. There's times mm -hmm. to rent and when you need to be flexible, like you're talking about your clients from New York, right? Yeah. Twelve months, if they're gonna go find a deal, they're gonna be looking in those twelve months. That's the best time to buy a house. Like when you have a rental, you get something in maybe month seven, you do a little yeah. bit of updating, do some stuff, get your stuff moved over. There's no rush. There's no heartache. Not a lot of people can afford to do that, obviously. Yeah. Well, so that's and it's the funny though, because they've been, so we just put their house on the market. Well, not that it's about, we're talking about them, but I mean, we just put their house on the market and they've been renting this house in New York. Like they saw it, they snagged it. They've been now over. So that it's actually the reverse for them where they're now slowly able to relocate to New York and get themselves readjusted there with like banks and schools. And um, so again, the same thing could happen certainly on the other side. But yeah. anyway, here's the big one, Nicole. Yeah. Households have a belief that mortgage interest rates are going to go up to 6.7% this year. And in the next three years, households believe it's going to go to 8.2%. If households really believe that, they're not going to be spending a lot of money on new real estate. And they're also not going to be selling their 3% interest home that they own. 
they're going to stay put. My little cold war of real estate that I talked about, if this comes true, that happens. People will freeze in their low interest rates. I don't believe we're going to see 8.2% in the next three years. But if the New York Fed is reporting through their 2022 survey of consumer expectations that a lot of people believe we're going to 8.2%, that's crazy. That will, it hasn't happened since 2000 where we've had 8%. That will hurt your real estate market. Those headlines, crisis, bubble, all of this kind of stuff, those might start to have some validation if we hit over 8% in three years. I don't want to say the world's coming to an end, but that'll, no, that'll, well, that'll it, hurt. It would, it would, it would certainly slow the world down. Yeah. And if yeah. you're, an, and if you're an agent, you're going to be in, in a very different market at that time, solving much different problems. If we get up over 8%. Well, you get like a hard, maybe, maybe a hard money lender would be cheaper. Mm, I don't know. Cause hard money is going to follow the rate, but you may. I don't know. If, like, if gonna, I was a hard money, money than that. I would, I'll get you cheap. Yeah. I mean, I would offer out, I'll get you cheaper money than eight. I mean, then you're just like, <laughs> if our hard charge, money lenders is listening, charge a few, charge a few points. And then like, dude, you got like an in, I mean, you could then start your, yeah. I mean, that's, that would be where I would, that's where I, I mean, maybe we need to start saving our pennies, Byron. We could be hard money lenders in, in three years. Well, we could certainly, th there'd be some interest from people sitting on a lot of money to say, Hey, you know, we've got a lot of these clients. Can we help certain types of clients in certain situations with hard money? But the thing about hard money is you're usually using it for a period of time and then refinance into a lower rate. Uh, I, I don't know. 8.2. I haven't seen a lot of experts predict that. Again, this is households. I know. Their feeling is They also thought that their house was only going to be worth more like 4% last year. So 5.7 I mean, last year. They are clearly not the expert. But. No, and this is everybody's, you know, speculating here. So this is a survey of speculation. And again, I think for us, what we really wanted to focus in on for agents and for team leaders and brokerages is, is the one thing, if people move, almost over 8% of them are more likely to rent on their next. So are you solving the problem for people who are like, okay, I'll sell or I'll move but I'd rather rent now. Only 60% mm -hmm. of people, if they sell in the next three years, would rather buy. So are you solving both problems? Um, what's a racket in here, Nicole? To me, I think 8.2% in the next three years time on a mortgage rate would mm -hmm. be a racket. That's a household prediction, but mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to see that. And are you asking me for my racket? Yeah, I guess. I mean, the whole thing is a racket. This whole <laughs> article is a Jeez. racket. <laughs> wow. Again, uh, I think I think the only good the the, hel the most helpful part in here is obviously, you know, the 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 attitude that homeowners have towards the market. I think that's something that you as an agent should be speaking to. Like you said, you should be educating them and helping them through that feeling. But all the other numbers and twos and fives and eights, I mean. That's all just a racket. That's throwing Total numbers racket. against the world. We're going to yeah. talk about the buyer confidence here in just a second, which I builder, think is builder, the, uh, builder. the builder confidence, I'm sorry, yeah. which is even more important to me uh, than maybe some of the household feeling. Both are important, but the builder one is really important. But first, let's talk about a mortgage without losing your marbles. Um, Nicole, do you have any marbles clinking around up I, there? I, I do, but I lose them frequently. Lo Often. Every Cosmo martini, you lose a couple more marbles. No, no, no. I, no, no, no. I, I have the Cosmos because I lost the marbles. All right. But you don't yeah. lose any more marbles if you use Tomo. HelloTomo.com. Great rates, no lender fees, and close on time. That sounds closing, pretty good. They are serious about closing. How 90, serious? Well, 98% of their loans close compared to 40% of their competitors. So if you can tell your clients, your buyers, that we're going to close 98% of the time on time, as opposed to four out of 10 times, which is what every other lender is going to do, why wouldn't you use Tomo? Send your clients over to hellotomo.com, hellotomo.com. Get a mortgage without losing your marbles. You need those marbles, especially if you're an agent Sometimes. or a broker because the alcohol is losing them all for you. Hello, Tomo.com. <laughs> I don't know. I like my alcohol. I think it's yeah, helping maybe, me. Maybe 
it's we like can it's start a alcohol brand with Tomo. It's a closing keeping, gift brand. It's keeping me like pickled. Like it's keeping them still. It's keeping you pickled. Yeah, it keeps me pickled. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into the builder confidence. Which is very interesting to me because we need more inventory. We are at, and you can put this up. This is a KCM uh, graph, single family housing units completed. We are 14 straight years below the 50 year average. Throw that chart up, please, Bobby. When we Before we went into 2008 and the mortgage crisis, we had four consecutive years of record setting number of units. We are nowhere near that. We started to tick up a little bit this year, but if cons if uh, builders rather are now getting less confident in actually building, does that number drop back below the line we need it at? Builder sentiment falls again in face of rising interest rates. This is an Inman article. We'll link it up. Builder confidence dropped two points to 77 as builders contend with rising interest rates and costs according to National Association of Home Builders, which is a Wells Fargo housing market index. Okay, builder sentiment in the market for single family homes took this tumble again in March. It's the fourth straight month of declines. So we've seen housing starts go up a little bit, but now their confidence is going down. So it dropped mm -hmm. two points to 77, according to this data that was released Monday. And this is because builders are contending with the rapidly rising interest rates and housing costs. So see, going back to the last topic there with the household <clears throat> confidence in right. where interest rates are going, they're not very confident in these interest rates. And if they're right, it gets to 6.7 by the end of this year, or it gets to 8.2% in three years, which I see as a really big racket how that's going to impact builders, right? How that's going to impact this inventory issue. Right. What I call the, this cold war of real estate where everybody just freezes and there's actually a significant drop in transactions because if I'm sitting below 4%, which by the way, Tomo doesn't do any refis. So if you're just going back to Tomo for a second, if you're a agent who when the interest rates do drop, don't want to deal with a lender that's just dealing with all kinds of interest rates. Tomo doesn't, they're the one company that doesn't do uh, refis. But if we're at 8.2%, nobody's refining. Right. Nobody is selling if they're at under 4%, like the majority of mortgages in this country right now, and, mm -hmm. and nobody's transacting. And right. builders aren't going to take the risk to go and Well, build. you, I mean, you can't, you almost can't take the risk because if, who knows if that buyer can then even afford it a year or 18 months later if they're right now being pre-approved at the current rate of, you know, four and a quarter. Yeah, I mean, it's freaking scary. I mean, we have builders that, I mean, every three months, they're even just upping their list prices, though, because of the, the potential cost increases, too. So, yeah, it's 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 scary and interesting and it's and it's almost – and I, I feel bad for builders, especially like in our area up here in the Northeast because – Again, building took such a, a hit when yeah. like the market crashed. And this is really sort of their time to shine. And it's like they still can't. You know, they still – it's like they just – everything just keeps getting thrown at them. Um, again, I mean, we we have some builders too that are storing appliances now just, you know, ready, um, you know, just anticipating for the build just so that they're not being held back. But – it's unfortunate and I, I feel terrible and, but you also can't blame them again, especially if, if people are thinking that rates are going to be climbing up to, to 8%, um, huh. even if it's going to be, but even if it's going to be going up to, you know, mid fives or 6% within the year, you know, it's going to take a builder at least a year to build a property. So that's certainly where a buyer is going to potentially going to be locking in. And at. you're not going to build spec homes if you think this interest rate is going to keep going up at a certain price. Because right. people afford less, the more these interest rates go up. So building right. on spec would, would become increasingly more dangerous mm -hmm. in this rising interest world. National uh, Association of Home Builders, NAHB, Chief Economist Robert Dietz said this, the housing market faces an inflection point as, is, as an unexpectedly quick rise in interest rates, rising home prices, and escalating material costs, which we're seeing timber start to come down. So timber is yes. actually at its lowest point right now, mm -hmm. have significantly decreased 
housing affordability conditions, particularly in the crucial entry level market. Because of all of these things we're talking about on this episode, I mean, you see interest rates at 8%, you would imagine, boom, housing prices are going to plummet. But if we aren't building, like Mm -hmm. we haven't to the level we need to the last 14 years, we haven't done this. And if we continue to not build at this level, and if people continue not to want to put their house on the market because they're locked into a great low rate, how in this case where we have rising interest rates, do we ever see home prices go down? KCM reports that actually initially when you have rising interest rates, initially you have an increase in home values because people will, you know, rush to the market. Of course. And then you, you know, if you have prolonged interest rates, typically then you'll see slow down, you know, yeah. you know, that drop in prices, but you're kind of like covering the increase that you had initially. I don't see any, any price, you know, I don't see price getting better for buyers any time soon. And if it continues, if the the rates continue to go up, it just gets harder and harder to afford, which is why people that own rental property, which is why all of these investors who are buying Mm -hmm. up one out of four homes are licking their chops. Well, unless, again, going back to the spec idea, I mean, unless these builders are building the spec and then, you know, maximizing on a rent while they're waiting to sell it too, you know, you can do Mm. like short, short term rentals or I don't know. There's something there, but anyway. Yes. All what right. did you call it? The Cold War? I keep calling it the Cold War real estate. I like People it. People just stop and don't do anything. Yeah. I think it's right. I think it's I think you're right on. There's some indexes regional breakdown. The Northeast inch up one point two seventy two, Midwest fell three points, South dropped two points, and the West inc- decreased by one point. So you can go break it down to your market. Again, that's an imminent article. We'll link that one up. All right. Realtor Mag, Nicole's favorite. They're the yep. marketeer of the week again. It's not again. Can't be Realtor Mag can't be your favorite now that BrokeAgentMedia.com has launched, right? <laughs> Bam's Nicole's new favorite. Bam. It's my favorite. All right. Mm-hmm. Agents use closing guarantees to help buyers win advantage. So this is interesting. If it you're is very interesting. If you're mm-hmm. someone who's trying to get deals done done and you're you know representing buyers yep this could be a great marketing pitch for you not only to get more buyers which some agents are saying i don't need more buyers i need more homes to sell but if you can convince your buyers to do this and you have the right strategy and proof of concept for them you can show them hey let's go get more let's go get this deal done yeah. And you can well, actually win more deals. Well, especially if you get Tomo involved, right? They're closing 98% of them. I 98%. Mean, so that's in multiple- the person that you would want to, you know, sort of hook up with in this situation <laughs> for sure. Because only 2% I mean, of the time would you be paying, right? Right. So here's what they're doing. I mean, it's, I think it's genius. In yeah. multiple offer situations, a closing guarantee yep. may help buyers' offers stand out. So we're guaranteeing that we are going to close on time. Written into a contract, these guarantees outline that if the transaction doesn't close by a specific closing date, the affected party will be compensated. So yeah, you want to work with a lender that's closing 98% of the time if you're going to do this, because if if you're making that guarantee, there is going to be some compensation if you miss the guarantee coming from the buyer or maybe the buyer's agent, depending on who's putting their money on the line. Such a guarantee could offer home sellers greater assurance that a particular offer will close over others they received in a bidding war. So if somebody has, a lot of times you have sellers though that want to just like stay in the home for another month or two because they don't know where to go. But if someone yeah. does need to get to a certain place at a certain time, this can help you. I'll be honest though. I mean, even the closing guarantee though with people that want to stay in the house, I mean, close it. Show me that you can close it. I Now I get like, maybe you're going to offer me a free rent back. I got my cash. You closed on time. I mean, I, to be honest, I feel like this is a great situation for agents too, because it's, it's allowing you to sort of keep the fire under your buyer's feet as well and the mortgage company. So you really have a lot more control over the actual closing date this way because you are constantly reminding everybody in the transaction that there is going to be, 
you know, obviously money involved if it doesn't close on that date. Because now it's like, when's the closing date? And agents are always like, you know, it's on the contract, but it's really up to the attorneys, like whenever they're available. So again, in this situation, again, make sure even if you're, if you are doing this, make sure your attorney's not on vacation that week either, because you certainly don't want to screw your buyers out of money too, if the attorney's on vacation. But again, I think it holds every single person that's now a part of this transaction, a hundred percent accountable. Um, and again, I think it would certainly make obviously your life easier as an agent, but also could really, really leverage your buyer um, into making, you know, an offer that a seller would be much more comfortable to accept. Yeah. Your marketing messaging right now, agents, brokers, team leaders should offer up a guarantee. You should be guaranteeing something in a world of uncertainty. A lot of households right now believe that interest rates are going to go to over 8% in three years, what guarantees are you making to them to feel confident about this housing market? This yep. is right out of the Tom Ferry playbook when you're talking about guarantees, the EOS playbook, which we run all of our companies on, Nicole. The EO, we're not uh, plugging EOS here, but even though I, I should get an affiliate link from them because me and Tom Tool plugged them pretty hard oh in our last pod, but you should be running your meetings in that L10 format. We've got an L10 coming up later today for our real estate team. Yep. And they talk when you go through EOS, for example, they talk about giving a guarantee from your company to consumers in your marketing to give them the confidence to transact with you and whatever it is that you're doing. All right. Yep. Good one, Nicole. You got to run. Love you got a you got a doctor appointment. They're going to take care of that pickling you were talking about. What, what was no, that? The, no, I wish. nothing to do with the pickling. All right. No, I got to I still got to fix my hands. All right. Fix those yeah, hands. I'm gonna so fix all the warm weather's coming for you. So uh, it be better. It, it's not yet. It keeps, I mean, I'm like in a sweatshirt. I think they, I think there was snow last night. It's not coming for me, but I'm, I'm ready for it. All right. If you haven't done so yet, go over to brokeagent.com. Check out the website. Let me know what you think on Instagram. Let Nicole know what you think on Is Instagram. Is it brokeagentmedia.com? It's, what did I say? But you said brokeagent.com. Brokeagentmedia.com. Media. Broke yes. agent media. See, I knew com. I was here. I knew I was you, here for a reason. You were here. You can go on the resource <laughs> page. You can get connected with Tomo or you can go over to hellotomo.com if you want to close 98% of your loans on time. We'll see you guys next week. See you guys.